Hello, everyone. We want to welcome you to another edition of TCM Live. That's right. We are Teen Christian Ministries, and we are coming at you from the Voice Network Studios. Yes. And we want to start off the program by giving The Voice a big shout out. Thank you for hosting us, guys. Well, we love The Voice Network and the people that work for The Voice Network. Yes. Uh, you know, Leslie, who is my co-host, of course, I'm Pastor Larry Roy, and this is the wonderful Leslie Lamb. I don't know about wonderful, but I am <laughs> Leslie Lamb. <laughs> we want to thank you guys for being here. I'll tell you, Leslie, uh, you and I, we were there. Uh, I know my wife was there and various other people. We had... Jeremy and Dana Lowe, but yes. we just got done with the Empowered 2012 event. Yeah. And it was held at Whitesbury Road Church of Christ. Yes. Anyone out there from Whitesbury Road, uh, Celebrate Recovery. Thank you guys so much <laughs> for having okay. us from Teen Christian Ministries. Yeah. You know, thank you to 887 for putting this whole thing on. You yes. know, it was a joint effort between 887 and the Cross. Celebrate Recovery of Whitesbury Road, right. Church of Christ, and Teen Christian Ministries. And put together by the amazing Earl Fisher. Yeah, so Earl, we, we know you're watching this. Yeah. Unless you're... And his son, uh, Matthew. Yeah, because he... Well, Earl may not. I mean, he could be asleep. Because, I don't know, Earl worked very hard on this. He event. did. He did an amazing yeah. job. I just so... You know, it's one of those things that whenever the Spirit leads you to do something... We think, oh, that's a great idea. And a lot of times yeah. we just kind of push it to the back. You know, and we never do it. But I love Earl's heart because he felt this, he believed in it, and he pushed forward, and God did amazing things. And I believe that he is going to see blessing in his life because of his obedience. Yeah, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, the empowered event, and we're not just going to we're not just going to rehash. We're going to talk about you know, of course, how things went and this and that. But for those of you that didn't get to make it, we're going to hit on some key issues that we talked about and what mm -hmm. empowered actually stood for. But first, we're going to open up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to dive into it. Yeah, all right, sound good. All right, all right, Daddy God, we come to you, Lord, and we thank you for this time, God. You are the reason for everything, Father, and Lord. We would just like to take right now, God, and just give you all the honor and glory. Yes. Lord, even in our difficult times, we know that you are there watching us, that you're there dealing with us, Lord, that you're there loving on us. And God, mm -hmm. there are people that are tuned in here tonight, Lord. Uh, they're hurting, and, and they need to be pointed in the right direction. Yes, God, there are people here that need to be instilled with hope. God, there are people here that are suffering that really just need to know somebody cares. Yes. And Lord, that's what we're all about here at Teen Christian Ministries. Lord, that's why we do TCM Live. So Father, for each person out there, Lord, I, I just ask for, we ask for a special blessing upon them. Lord, um, help us to be able to help them, but not because of anything that we do, Lord, but because you empower us to yes, do this. Jesus. Father, thank you for the Empowered event, Empowered 2012 that we just... Uh, we just wrapped up. Thank you for the many lives that were touched there, and thank you for everyone who had anything to do with it. Yes. Uh, we look forward to seeing great and wonderful things happen as a result. Yes. So, Lord, we give you this time. We praise you and we love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you, of course, like I said, you know, you were there. Yes, I was uh, there. You were there selling your books. Yes. Which was really cool. And I was talking to young girls. Yeah, talking to young girls. Giving away Bible study, guys. Yeah. It was really cool to be able to to see you there and engaging with people because I know that's really that's your passion. You yeah. like you like engaging with people, especially young girls, mm -hmm. and letting them know that they are worth it. They are worthwhile. Mm -hmm. uh, Mercy Ministries was also there. Yeah, they were yeah. getting ready for their big five yeah. k run fundraiser, which is important because yeah. you know there may be some people watching. Just a little shout out for Mercy. Yeah. Mercy Ministries is an amazing organization that offers counseling, help, and kind of a rehab program for um, girls and young women, um, and it's completely free. And the reason why it's free is because amazing people who love and believe in forgiveness, redemption, and um, restoration give of their personal money in order that these girls can go free. Yeah. And that's what the 5K is about. It's about raising money so that more and more girls can be helped and become healthy women of God. And I'll tell you, they have some, they have some really wonderful 
testimonies that oh, come out of yeah. You've heard more of them than I have. Oh, but. yeah. I go, try to go to every event I can just because you, you can't go and not bring tissue. God's doing an amazing yeah. work through Nancy Alcorn and her ministry. And Mercy what's that website? Ministries. I know it's on our resources page. Do you know their website right offhand? MercyMinistries.org. MercyMinistries.org. You might want to check that out, guys. Maybe yeah. uh, youth pastors out there, you want to check that out and order some information. Oh, at yeah, least they some, have amazing resources. Yeah, at least, at least some brochures to put up at the church. Mm-hmm. Um they might be able to help someone. Yeah, you can have somebody from the organization come and talk to your church. They can bring resources. Yeah. They sell resources about self-injury, about uh, eating disorders. Um, S- uh, self-harm, self- suicide, yeah. mm-hmm. the whole nine yards, yeah. man. Anything that young girls are dealing with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's for young girls. We're not trying to leave boys out, but it is for specifically for young yeah. girls. But hopefully there's an organization. We'll have to do some research on that and figure out if there's an organization yeah. for young men because they struggle with some of the same things. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It was so wonderful, too, to see all of these organizations, all these people, all these youth pastors coming together at White's Ferry Road Church of Christ mm-hmm. and just seeing the spirit move. Jeremy and Dana Lowe, oh, praise and worship. Amazing. It, it, it was off the charts. Mm. I mean, I could feel the Holy Spirit being ushered into mm-hmm. that place. But I'm going to tell you something, okay? Um, <clears throat> empowered didn't just end with, with, with this event. Uh, you know, uh, you sort of have a little bit of idea if you weren't there what Empowered was about. Now, it was about bringing people together, bringing these resources together, bringing youth groups together, bringing unchurched people together. Right. Uh, just getting a lot of people together and really sharing the love of Jesus Christ and saying, look, your life may look hopeless now. Your life may look bad now, but there's a new chapter coming and all you have to do is believe in it. You All you have to do is believe upon Christ. All you have to do is become empowered. Mm. Because, see, that's where, you know, that's where we reach uh, those critical levels in our lives is where we relinquish power to something other than God. And we, right. we talked about that, actually. Um, and the definition that I used, you know, because I was the one that spoke, you know, I was, mm-hmm. I, was, I was very blessed and honored to be able to preach at Empowered. And you brought it, brother. Yeah. But I used the definition that, I'm, that I looked up of Empowered, which is to invest with power, especially legal power or official authority, to equip or supply with an ability. I mean, enabling... People, and this is what, what empowered, what I wanted people to take away from this. Enabling people, enabling objects, enabling talents and desires to take over your life. Enabling anything to take that place of Daddy God. Mm-hmm. You're putting faith in it. You are empowering it yeah. to rule your life. That's like I asked the question, you know, who is the first president of the United States? And of course, you know... Uh, They were like, uh, George Washington, you know? And I'm like, well, how do you know that? And I know that's a very simple question. And I said Abraham Lincoln. Oh, did you? (laughs) (laughs) I actually did. But then I was like, oh, yeah, it was George Washington. (laughs) I wasn't good in school. So if you're not doing good in school, that doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means God's using you in other ways. Okay, but anyway, that's my little flex for the average child. Yes. You tried hard. (laughs) Tried very hard. But it was British boarding school, right? No, it wasn't. No, no. I went to oh, I went to British school when I was in an elementary, but then I went to boarding. Oh, school. Oh, so it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Okay, it so it was a British school. British yeah. elementary messed you up. Yeah, uh, it did. just joking. God, jolly friends over the wall. Yes, that is just true. Across the pond. You know, so not only did I just insult them, <laughs> just completely but imp- I'm butchering their accent now. You know, anyway, I'm sorry. Um, no, but we're not British, obviously. <laughs> no, no. We're, sometimes people wonder for even American, right? Yes, right. And, but yeah, so. Human sometimes. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Back to George Washington. Uh, yeah, uh, George Washington. I was like, you know, who is the first president of the United States? And I was like, George Washington. And I'm like, okay, and here's what I want you to ask yourself on this too. Those of you that weren't there, those of you that haven't heard this before, it's really cool. How do you know that? It's because you place your faith in that knowledge. And where did you receive that knowledge? Well, you know, I asked them and they said, well, history class. And I'm like, okay, so let's get this straight. You're placing your faith in a textbook Mm -hmm. that tells you something is the truth. Mm -hmm. You have no way to prove that it's true or not. All you have is the textbook words there that say that. Mm -hmm. The textbook does not claim to be 100% accurate. Yet people like to turn around and ridicule the Bible. Yeah. Which... Evidence has proven time and time and time again to be accurate. Right. And on the flip side of that, history 
can prove. Right. To, uh, you know, exactly. Uh, I we do talk, have the picture yeah. of George Washington in the boat. So yeah. well, was at least we lived. That was a painting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, so we know. I mean, we know George Washington was the first president of okay, the United States, do. and That's we have question. we have evidence of it. Right. right. I mean, we really do. Yeah. But what I want you to see on that is you place faith either way. You mm -hmm. place faith in the Bible based upon fact mm -hmm. and based upon believing spiritually and believing in faith on Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then in a history mm -hmm. book, you have something that doesn't claim to be 100% true, but it does present uh, facts and it does present things that can be proven. Yeah. So, I mean, what you put your faith in is important, Leslie. Very much so. I mean, yeah. because if you look at your life and you look at the way you're living right now, you know, those of you out there uh, that are, that are still have your attention here, think about that. What do you, what do you have faith in tonight? What are you looking at and saying, okay, this is ruling my life? Is it a relationship? I've seen that so many times, yeah. Leslie, where you'll have a guy and a girl, they meet. First, they start glancing at each other from across the room and laughing and kind of blushing, you know. Then they end up talking a little more. Then they talk a little more. Right. They talk a little more. And before you know it, they put everyone out of their lives except each other. Right. So, in effect, the person that you're dating takes the place of God because you allow that person to have that power. You put faith in that person to lead you. Yeah. And your friends fall to the wayside. Nothing else seems important but that person. Yeah. And that is so very dangerous to do that. Yes, it is, because humans will fail you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first things that you know I tell people in my youth group, especially when I get a new group, I'll tell them, look, I appreciate you looking to me as a leader, and I hope I can be an inspiration and help you, but I want you to know you need to look past me to God, because yeah. I will fail you somehow, some way. Yeah. It Even if you don't going, want to, yes. it's going to happen. If people put expectations on you, if they build their, if they put their faith in you, you're going to fail them because you're going to do something that they didn't expect, or you're going to do something that they didn't like. And the beauty of God is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there are things that happen in our lives that we don't like. But we can still go to God in the midst of that. We can yeah. still place our faith in the only one who's not going to let us down. Now, the enemy's going to try to encourage, you know, try to lie to us and tell us, well, he did that to you, and he made that happen to you, and he's the reason why all that happened. But the truth of the matter is, he's just shifting the finger when the blame goes on him. Yeah. You know, the devil is the one who, who causes the chaos and the destruction. It says that every good gift comes from above, yeah. from the Father of lights, and that is God. And so every good thing comes from him. And um, the devil wants us to, to look at him as our enemy and not have faith in him. Yeah, and a lot of times what we like to look forward to, we hear all these stories in the, the Old Testament about God uh, appearing, and I think we get the impression that any time that God appears to us or wants to speak to us, that it's going to be something huge and big and shiny and flashy. And one of the things that I also talked about was um, it was in was it First Kings nineteen? Whenever the prophet Elijah was fleeing from uh, Jezebel, mm -hmm. and I've always found that interesting because you know he found himself up seeking God, right? And he went through a windstorm, mm -hmm. you know, powerful windstorm, winds whipping everywhere, trees being uprooted from the ground, all kinds of stuff, right? And God wasn't there, and then he went through an earthquake. Mm -hmm. You know, the ground is moving and shifting and things are just going crazy around you. And you're like, whoa, okay, God's got to be here. This is an awesome display of power. You know, it's like being on that little horsey at the mall and somebody puts a quarter in and you're like, ah, or maybe that's just me. But, you know. I think that's just you. Yeah, God is, yeah, God is not rocking you in the horsey at the mall or Walmart no, or wherever. Really? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, and, the, and the next one was really cool is there's a, uh, Elijah hears a whisper. Mm. He hears a whisper. And God says, yep, that's me. That's me. Mm -hmm. So while a lot of us, we're looking for God to change us, to direct us, we're looking for uh, evidence mm -hmm. within ourselves. We're looking for spiritual evidence. We're looking for confirmation that he's there. And I think we wrongly many times look for the earthquake. We look for the windstorm. And we don't realize that it's just, it's in the whisper. And we all know that whisper. It's like, uh, I use this quite often. You know that little whisper, that little voice you hear in the back of your head before you do something wrong that says, eh, I might not ought to do that. Mm -hmm. 
That's your conscience. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's God. And we dismiss it because it sounds so much like our voice. Mm -hmm. But on the same token, we also pay attention to another little voice because Satan likes to mimic God as yeah. best as he possibly can. And we hear that we hear that little voice saying, oh, you can do that. You've already thought it. You might as well go ahead and do it. Right. And that is a lie. Yeah. Just because you think about doing something, it, it's sort of like this. If I'm sitting here, I'm going, hey, Lushley, I got a good idea. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> do I have to talk like that? You don't have to if you okay. want to. Okay. Let's go rob a bank because I already thought about it, so I'm guilty of it, so I might as well go do it. <laughs> No. I mean, that makes about Don't as much do that, sense. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> it, exactly. It makes as much sense because just because you uh, think about something, just because you consider doing something, does not mean you're guilty of that. You can mm -hmm. take that thought captive right there. Yeah. And you can say, you know, to yourself, you don't have to shout it out loud. You don't have to go to your rooftop and shout it out loud. But, you know, you can say, I, I hold this thought captive, not with my power, but the power of Jesus Christ. You know, I give this thought over to you, God. Please don't let me have these thoughts anymore. Help help to train me to not have these thoughts anymore. Right. Because I'm going to tell you the way we look at things. And I this this was one of my favorite parts in the in the conference when I used this uh, this illustration about the three boys and the sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got your attention, didn't I? Teenagers and food. Matt there keeps you go. talking about that. My daughter yeah. keeps talking about this. Yeah. It was really cool. It's a really cool illustration, but it, it, it really talks, it really shows how we do things today, a lot of us. There were uh, three boys. There were three teenage boys, and they brought their, they all three brought their lunches to school, and so they're sitting out there one day on the retaining wall there at lunch, and the first one opens up his uh, sack, you know, or his lunch pail, and he says, oh, man, tuna fish sandwiches again. If I get tuna fish sandwiches one more time, I'm going to go jump off that building over there. And the second one opens his up, and he goes, oh, man, tacos again. I'm with you, man. I get tacos one more day in a row, I'm going to jump off that building. The third one opens his up, and he's like, oh, bologna and cheese sandwiches. I'm with you, too. If I get bologna and cheese sandwiches one more day, I'm going to do the same thing. So guess what happens? The next day rolls around. They're sitting there on the same retaining wall. And uh, the first one opens up his lunch. He goes, ah. the other two look at him. He goes, tuna fish. I'm going to go jump off that building. And he looks over at the other one. They look over at the second one. And he opens up his uh, lunch pail. And guess what? Tacos. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go with you. The third one opens his up and goes, bologna and cheese I'm going with you I'm going with you and so all three of them go up to the building they all three jump off this is a little disclaimer do not jump off of buildings yes and they all three break their you legs break yourself, yes. yeah they break their legs it's horrible it's horrible they're writhing in pain Ooh. and so they end up in the emergency room and their mothers are sitting there and the doctor walks in asking them all kinds of questions and stuff and um, just kind of giving them giving the moms some, some kind of weird looks because th they explained the story to them. If, if they had, if they bought that same lunch one more time, they were going to do something bad. And so the first mom, you know, is over there with the, with the kid and it's like, I'm so sorry about this. I'm so sorry. And the second one's just, just, just bawling and like, oh, I'm so sorry. I did, I, if I just known that you were serious and you were going to do this. And the third mom's just kind of sitting there acting indifferent. Yeah. And so the other two moms, you know, they look over at the third mom, and you go, and the third mom goes, "You make his, you make his lunch, right?" So you made the tuna fish. Yeah, I made the tuna fish. And the second one's like, "You made the tacos. I made the tacos." And they kind of look at him and go, "What about you're not upset about your son?" And he's like, "He makes his own lunch." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, that's the way we do a lot yeah, of things. It is. Yeah. Because, I mean, this this boy made this bet along with these other two, saying that if he got the same lunch one more time, he was going to jump off a building. He makes his own lunch. Yeah. He could have made something completely different, but right. he didn't. But he didn't. But he turned around and, in his mind, blamed somebody else <laughs> yeah. for what he did. He put himself where he was. Mm. And we tend to do that in our lives. Yeah. And we don't have to. You know, if you want to become empowered, yeah. if you want God to teach 
teach you. If you want God to teach you, mm-hmm. if you want God to instruct you, if you want God to show you a new path, mm-hmm. one of the first things you have to do is accept blame when you have the blame on your shoulders. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're never going to learn. You're never going to move past that. Mm-hmm. You'll always be the bo- you'll always be the boy that br- that makes his own lunch, but then blames his mom or anyone else for the lunch he has to eat. Yeah. Right. And also, we talked about um, we talked about David and Goliath, and that was really cool. I, I enjoyed you know using yeah, different voices. Yeah, he did voices. some great yeah some great impersonations on that. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. But you know, David looked at and it's cool if you really read um, and you really read into the scriptures, mm-hmm. you know, because um, David wasn't very big. This is in First Samuel seventeen one through eleven. You can check this out. Yeah, he was a little guy. Yeah, he was little. The youngest of his brothers, which was why he was a shepherd yeah. over the sheep. And what was crazy about this is, and I've never really thought about this. I've never really thought about this aspect of it. You've got all these other people that are um, stronger than him, that mm-hmm. are bigger than him, mm-hmm. that are there. Right, and Saul was. Yeah, Saul was said he was to be head and shoulders above, above everybody else. Man. So yeah. he was kind of like if you were standing next to Triple H or, right. or The Rock or somebody like that, you know, real big guy. You right, know? right. Who's and, The Rock? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fleshly thought. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> he got some big muscles over there. Yes, that he does. He, he, yeah. Yeah, and he's but an anyway. actor now, too. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Yeah, they went from wrestling to act. Well, I guess it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Those of you out there that don't know, wrestling is fake. That, oh. That's right. If you have any, uh, yeah, if you have the any. The WWF is coming after you. WWE. Okay, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> see, it's probably been see, the 80s yeah, since see, I've watched yeah, the wrestling WWF, one time. The WWF got in a big legal battle with WWF, which is the World Wildlife Fund. Oh! And the wow. WWF lost. So they had to change oh. the name to WWE. Oh. Yeah. Well, there. see, I didn't know that. There you go. So obviously not a wrestler. <laughs> exactly. You're not a wrestler? I'm not a wrestler. I could see you wrestling. Because it's not wrestling. It's wrestling. <laughs> but anyway. So you've got this big guy that could be a wrestler, <laughs> yeah. Goliath, right? He's out there and he's taunting everyone. Mm-hmm. Even these guys like Jonathan who had taken over and defeated like a whole Gentile outpost and things like that, you know. Jonathan was scared to go out there. Saul, the king, who was huge... He was scared to go. Now, he wasn't nearly as big as Goliath. Yeah. But still, he was scared to go out there. Yeah. What they saw was this guy was too big. This guy's too big. This guy was too huge. He's too big for me to tackle. Mm-hmm. But David, because he had faith in God, and, and here's the important thing now. Not saying that you should just go out there and pick on somebody a lot bigger than you and go, well, i got faith in God. I'll go, I'll go beat up that huge. No, bullying is not yeah. right. No, no matter which all. way you slant it. Like no, on the news story where that little yeah. eight-year-old, was it eight-year-old? I think it was an eight. Or, Assaulted that yeah. 220 pound big old gym teacher guy in the yeah, news. Yeah. Crazy. But anyway, you don't want to say, I believe in God so I can go do this. You want to do what God's called you to do. Mm-hmm. I, want to, you know, I want to make that very clear. God called David to do this. Yeah. So David went out there. He scooped up his rocks. Mm-hmm. He had his slingshot. Mm-hmm. And he walked out there and he took care of business. I'm sure he was nervous, of course. I'm sure his knees were knocking and everything else. But he had you faith. You think so? Because David's faith was so strong. He believed, not just think. You know, we, we, we sometimes walk into a situation and we think, okay, God's got my back, right? His word says he's got my back, he's got my back. But this was David. David that fought lions yeah. to protect sheep. You know, he wasn't just, I mean, he was a small kid. But he had also seen the power of the Lord displayed in his life yeah. as a shepherd. So when he stepped up and he walked up, he said, I know I can take this dude down yeah. because I have God on my side. I don't think his knees were shaken. You don't think so? I don't think so. I think that he knew that the God that stood behind him was greater than any giant he faced. Well, yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not trying to <laughs> well, change well, things. Well, what, what, I was thinking, well, well, what I was thinking about was this. But you, that's you, you've, got David, you've got David who is stepping out. He's stepping out on faith. Yeah. He's seeing all these things happen in his life. However, he is stepping out onto a battlefield by himself between two armies. Right. Up to this giant of Massive a man. man. Yes. I mean, it's yes. got the it's got the stuff here was talking about, let's see, what was it? His armor alone. He was over he was over nine foot, perhaps as much as ten foot tall. Yeah. I'm six three. Ten yeah. foot tall is way up I there. I can't even imagine. His armor alone weighed one hundred and twenty five pounds. 
His spear, like a weaver's rod, and a bronze point weighing 15 pounds. Mm. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, it is big. And so, stepping out there, and I may be wrong. You may be right on this, I don't but I've always pictured... We'll have to ask God when we get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those inquiries that I have. <laughs> but I've always pictured David stepping out there between these two armies, and, it, and if nothing else, pure adrenaline. Mm-hmm. And being nervous stepping out in front of people. Maybe he wasn't. That's just always the way I pictured him. And maybe it's because <laughs> I would be, yeah. maybe, you know. Yeah. I mean, we always like to think that we would be the superhero, that we would step out there and be perfectly fine. And some of us, we would surprise ourselves. We might do just that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but some of us, I think, a lot of times we like to think that we would be strong out there. Yeah. But when the time comes, we're like, God, I really need you because I'm scared. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Been there. There's nothing wrong with being scared. That's part of building faith. Yeah, it is. Very but what did so. he do? He went out there and uh, instead of looking at it the way that his colleagues looked at it, because mm -hmm. they looked at it as in Goliath was too big mm -hmm. to fight, David looked over at him. He's like, well, man, shh, he's too big to miss. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. He is too big to miss. Mm -hmm. And so David went out there and he defeated Goliath. And, you know, God is going to send you in different directions in your life. Because here's one thing. Israel, if you think about this, Israel, the Israelite army, they typically did not settle battles that way. That was something that was pretty unique to this situation. This yeah. is the way the Philistines wanted to do it. Right. Well, Goliath wanted to do it because yeah. he was being cocky. Yeah, he was so, like, you can't take me down. So, you take me down, yeah. you take down my army. So Goliath yeah. was like, look, we're going to walk out here. And if you can send a man up, then... Uh, the two of us will decide the entire battle without everyone else having to fight. But Israel usually did not face things like that. Usually it was man on man. Everybody was fighting. Mm -hmm. And so that just goes to show you that even serving God, those of us that are believers, though, 